All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to another episode of Your Deck Live. That's right, the show where I play Your Deck live on stream. This is the second part of a double dip. So for those that don't know what a double dip is, that's where I take the user-submitted deck, I play it through a league, I update it to what I think is optimal, and then I play it again, okay? So part two of a double dip, and this is also the brew, meaning instead of giving me a deck, the viewer gave me an idea. So this is like just pushing all the buttons here. Glory MTG uh, submitted for the double dip brew with a theme of basically just win the game with Westvale Abbey. That was it. Those are my instructions. And the first deck I built, which you can see on YouTube if you missed it, was this little number right here where I was just trying really, really hard to Westvale Abbey all day, every day with multiple ways to find Westvale Abbey uh, in Reclaimer and Rejuvenator and just literally everything was hell-bent towards getting Abbey flipped as soon as possible. It didn't work that well. Uh, it didn't work that well. Unfortunately, uh, Westvale Abbey, while a powerful card, trying to focus on just Westvale Abbey didn't work too well. And it kind of was a little bit of a bummer, honestly, because when I, when I built the deck, I was like, this deck's kind of sweet, honestly. But, but, that's why we get to, uh, get redo round two here, you know? So, round two, and instead of focusing 100% on Westvale Abbey, we're using it as a complimentary, complimentary piece this time in a deck that is essentially, um, a green-white tokens kind of uh, Cryptoith Rite deck. So Cryptoith Rite is a, a card that was played with Westvale Abbey in Standard, back when they were both legal. Two mana enchantment, and it makes all of your creatures Birds of Paradise. So you got to make this worth a card, obviously, but we have multiple mana sinks, and of course Cryptoith Rite makes activating Westvale Abbey really, really easy. Uh, not too hard to pop off Abbey on turn four if you are Cryptolith writing. And um, we also want some Mana Sinks as well. So we're making a lot of tokens here. Uh, we have eight Lana Royals, uh, Thurman Inspector, the best Elvish Mystic of all time. Uh, and then we got Sapperly Migration, which is good on both sides. A lot of mana or on turn two. Amara, definitely the coolest card with Cryptolith Right, making a token every single turn. Really, really cool. Uh, Voice of Resurgence is a good card in general, and uh, very, very good against removal decks, things like that. And uh, that's kind of the tokeny half of things. And then we have our, our Mana Sink kind of payoffs for playing a lot of tokens. And we're playing some weird ones here, I'm not going to lie. So Death Watch Recruiter, well-known card, saw a lot of play in Standard, Modern, etc. Great Mana Sink for Crypto with Right. Just funnel all your mana to it, draw a lot of cards, keep playing cards, etc., etc. One copy of Evolutionary Leap. Cool card against removal, uh, able to basically play this against a control deck and they can't ever win. Uh, and obviously very good voice resurgence as well. And we got some other ones, so kind of little little weird ones here. Shalai Voice of Plenty, uh, saw a lot of play in standard, 3-4 flyer, gives all your stuff hexproof, and of course 6 mana to pump the team. Nice mana sink for Crypto with Right, and then also can give our Westvale Abbey hexproof. So when we want to go for Westvale Abbey, we can just go for it safely. That's kind of the idea there. We have two copies of a Johnny the Great Hearted. Pop a Planeswalker, this doesn't really see much play, but uh, compares favorably to a Johnny uh, Goldmane, the original Johnny, and gives everything Vigilance, which is very, very good. Crypto with Right, pumps the team, very, very good with all our tokens, and uh, pretty powerful card. And we have two copies of Iron Root Warlord. And this card might look weird, all right? Uh, this is <laughs> kind of a draft common. Three mana for an, a star five. Power to the number, number of creatures you control, five mana make a token. But when you're playing a deck full of like one ones and small creatures, it's nice to have a card that is counter to that. Um, so cards like Anger of the Gods won't blow you out. And Warlord does that. Five thought this is the magic number in Pioneer. Uh, survives. Glorybringer, Grasp of Darkness, Chandra, uh, all sorts of stuff. Big enough to block many things as well. So. Two copies of that. I just really wanted another Mana Sink as well. So, Mana Sinks are Recruiter, Warlord, Shalai, uh, Evolutionary Leap, Westvale Abbey, and then kind of Migration and Clues on Inspector. So, kind of like an aggressive token deck, but definitely focusing a bit on the Westvale Abbey thing as well, as requested. Mana Base could be a little better if we had Fast Lands and Pain Lands, but 
one of the least, my least favorite parts of Pioneer is the imbalance of the mana bases. There are no allied pain lands or fast lands, so we're stuck using Fortified Village and Sun Petal Grove. Just not ideal. Not ideal. Cyborg gives us a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, kind of just a variety pack of things that are good in certain spots. Uh, we have Damping Sphere, Rest in Peace uh, against combo decks. We've got Hushbringer against the Inverter decks and other comes into play comes, comes into play triggers. Lovestruck Beast, good against your mono red and kind of bigger decks like that. Knight of Autumn, good against them. Also Disenchant, Selfless Spirit, and Gideon of Trials, good against Wraths, while Gideon of Trials is also good against combo decks. So a lot of a lot of pairs here, but they they kind of pair off to do different things. So Gideon and Damping Sphere coming against combo, Gideon and Selfless Spirit coming against control. And then uh, one copy of Elspeth's Sun's, ne Sun's Nemesis, when you really got to have uh, just a resilient threat against decks playing lots and lots of removal. So that's the deck. Seems pretty fun. And we're going to see uh, if we can get a few more wins than last time, which shouldn't be hard if you saw the last one. And again, if you, if you missed the first half of this double dip, it is on the YouTubes. Go check it out. Want to see your deck on your deck live? Well, I'll tell you how right now. Hop on over to my website. JimDavisMTG.com. Oh my God, are we out of tickets? Are we out of tickets? Wow. Uh, one second, folks. Check out CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuffInc.com. Number one source for your game shopping needs. While we did somebody say cool? Cause I'm here. I came to wish you luck. Yeah. And also tell you. That there may or may not be Jello in the fridge. I do like Jello. You do. I do like Jello. Don't question the color; just eat it. I'm a like, <laughs> I'm a like resub, my I'm friend. Like, hi, I haven't seen you in forever. Yes. I'm a like. We'll see. My, Nicole might do a stream tonight. I'm doing a Nicole stream while at my at my hockey game. Might. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. Yep. Let's do it. Man, I don't have any tickets. Um, I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> Coolstuffing.com. I do a, a video article on every Monday. I do a written article every Friday. Make sure you check those out. Uh, tomorrow's article is all about modern. I know you all love modern. Modern and uh, there's a lot of new decks in modern. Modern's been opening up quite a bit. And um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. What? Yeah. Modern, uh, a lot of new decks in modern. A lot, a lot of change in modern. And, um... And, yeah. So, check it out. CoolStuffInc.com. Promo code JIM5. 5% off your order. CoolStuffInc.com. Check it out. Also, check out BCWSupplies.com. BCW Supplies. Best supplies in the market. The Elite 2 deck guard sleeves are the best. Not even close. And, uh... You can get them. Promo code Jim10. 10% off your order. Coolstuffinc.com. I mean, bcbsupplies.com. Sorry, promo code Jim10. I'm trying to do two things at once here behind the scenes, and I'm not multitasking very well. But we're good to go here. We're good to go. I'll check out uh, Cardboard Live. If you're a content creator, you got to be on Cardboard Live. End of story. Email James. Get on the beta. Cardboard.live. It's the overlay you see on the stream. Makes everything awesome. Makes everything awesome. Cardboard.live. Again, if you're a content creator, please get involved with James. And, uh, yeah. Get yourself cardboard lived, all right? All right, we're ready to go here. Sorry about the delay. Sorry about the delay. My bad. My bad. Let's go. And, of course, as I was saying before, I want to see your deck played live on stream. It's easy. Hop on over to my website, jimdavismtg.com, and uh, aside from finding all my social media and my articles and all about me, I play your deck. There's all the info. That's right. There's the queue, how much it costs, what do you get, how to submit your list, how to donate. All on there. All on there. All right. Cool. JimDavisMTG.com. Anyway, so let's get a nice, nice round of hype for Amalek and Amalek's 41-month resub. Hype for Amalek, everyone, or you get banned. Let's go. Downtown Abbey. we got to improve here. 
We got to improve. Last downtown Abbey did not work too well. More hype where you get banned. Curse Axel, let's go. All right. Uh, this hand's pretty nice. Honestly, where'd my chat go? There we go. All right. All right. We're keeping. Let's go. We got our Crypto with right. We got our Amara. We got Lano Elves. They got Castle Ardenvale. Lol. Oh, they're, they're playing Supreme Verdict. It's pretty annoying, but we'll work through it. We'll work through it. Lano Elves. We get to. We'll see if they're playing blue white or not. All right, so we probably get to resolve a voice of resurgence here, uh, uncontested. I would I would assume. I don't know what counters voice on with two mana, so resolving that against them is pretty good. And I guess we're just jamming. Uh, we're just jam. I mean, obviously we're scared of verdict. You know, we're gonna hold back on this Elvish Mystic. Just act for one. Cycle sensor, LOL. Having voice in play is very nice. Although if I played the Elvish Mystic and they have to ferry bounce, I could have gone rip crypto with right and voice again. Not sure. Obviously, playing in Supreme Verdicts makes things very complicated for us. Gideon of the Trials. Okay. Sure. Alright. Our voice is bubbled. Um, I think I'm cool with Crypto with Right Amara here. We get Wrath's gonna suck, but... So, certainly a wrathable board, but we have Second Amara, we've got Elvish Mystic, we'll have a voice token if they're Wrath, which isn't the end of the world. Blue White Control seems like a pretty poor matchup for us. The card, the card Supreme Verdict is really a, really a stink in our plan. Teferi Time Raveler. Annoying. Yeah, they are missing a fourth land, which means they have all, all spells. Song of Freelies is like the... the... the Saga Crypto with Right. It's too narrow. Only works for one turn, right? Bouncing Crypto with Right is pretty interesting. Because I can just recast it and have a bunch of mana available too, so... Interesting. So... All right, we need to stop drawing Elvish Mystics, that's for sure. So, I mean, we're going to attack some Planeswalkers here. I guess we're playing another Elvish Mystic. They had the land. They could have Wrath last turn. Obviously chose not to, which is fine. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to play Ray Green. Just play an Elf. And attack Gideon. And attack Teferi. And hope they don't got verdicts. Because uh, we prefer if these two mystic draws were actual, just actual lands. Main phase omen of a sea? God, you love to see that. You love to see that. Yeah, we, we want crypto with right every turn, not just one turn. So I think that's better. All right, so they go bottom, bottom on Sea Ordain. Hobbit, resale, welcome back. Six months. Love it. Thank you. They put a Gideon of a Trials emblem in play, which is interesting. It's Impel Garden. All right, I mean, we're not committing any more creatures to the board. So, I think we're just attacking realistically. Question is, do we attack Gideon with uh, enough things to get around Azorius Charm? 
They've got five cards in hand. Yeah, probably. So you go like Gideon, Gideon. Oh shit, I'm sorry. They have a Zori Strong, but you should get to have a voice, a voice token. But they have Zori Strong, the the voice, and then Wrath. That sucks. Um, maybe the voice should stay home. Is that crazy? I don't think that's crazy. Yeah, we're gonna go Gideon, Gideon, them, them. And I think Voice is going to stay home, playing around Steal Away, or... I guess if they had Steal Away, they could cast it on their turn, but Azorius Charm is a big one, I suppose. Let's try this. No blocks. Just gonna die. Um, and then I'm gonna shock here, just for maybe they will think we have collected company or something, or I don't know. So little downside to shocking, I think. They're gonna scry too. Another main phase Omen of the Sea? I don't think Omen of the Sea is good enough. I'm just going to throw that out there. That one goes top-bottom. And here comes the Wrath. Man, I wish we, wish, we, wish we had a company, honestly. Alright. Well, now we're trying to ship everything. If they have a second Wrath, we can't win, so... I have no problem just dumping it all on the board. Wrath me again, Daddy. Nope. No, no token maker. No uh, annoying procession. Oh God. No. Yes, to fairy. Okay. And plus. Interesting. Very interesting. They have four cards in end. Still have to be playing around the Azorius Charm or something. I'm just going to play Shalai. Um, plays around Azorius Charm, plays around Settle. And again, if they have a second verdict, we just can't win anyway, so I don't think there's a reason to try and play, play around it. Sure. Well, now we get to kill Teferi and deal some damage. Uh, they bend a card, which is good. Attack Teferi, attack Teferi, attack them, attack them. Get a token. And say a prayer, basically. No verdict, please. Upkeep scry two. So we're looking for bottom bottom here. Because they're probably bottoming any non wrath. They go top top, god damn it. Alright, well they found their wrath. Obviously they were looking for it, which is pretty sick. But now we're dead, so that's sick. Found the wrath in the top two cards. Johnny, where have you been? You know? I might as well resolve with Johnny. I mean, playing a 1-1 one -one just doesn't do anything. Alright. Yeah, beating two rats in a game one seems almost impossible, honestly. Just not how our deck is built. Our deck is just all creatures, so... Once we board, bring some Planeswalkers and stuff, sure. And self Spirits and so on, but... And they have Dig through. Let's go to the next game. Alright. Uh, it's tough for a tough game. We, we almost won the game, too. They, just had, they had to find Second Wrath, and they were dead in, like, two turns, but... They did. They did. It's okay. Alright, so 
probably you know one of our our worst possible matchups. I would think. Um, just the verdict deck. We need to bring in Elspeth, Self of Spirit, and Gideon, and I want to shave like a Crypto with right and some mana creatures. Shave like one Lana or Elves, one Elvish Mystic, and. Excuse me. I mean, Giant of the Great Heart is not very good, but it does add power to the board without adding a creature, which is not bad. I mean, Iron Root Warlord's also pretty bad, too, I guess. Just cut that one out. The big butt doesn't matter. Not going to have a lot of creatures in play, so. This is fine. We've got, uh, you know, Gideon of Trials is good. Elspeth is good. A few more Planeswalkers here. Crazy person going top, top. Oh, man. Alright, let's go first. Okay, this hand's actually tight. Because Evolutionary Leap is great. Our Planeswalkers are great. We have no one drop, but this is an easy keep. Amara is also great by itself, because it just kind of makes tokens and floats around. So, no one drop is not ideal, but we wore some one drops out, so it's fine. Evolutionary Leap is quite exciting. Do -do 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 Llanowar Elves. Alright, so we'll attack here. And if they have Zori's Charm, we get to resolve a Gideon. Let's get Token, too, so... Mare's pretty nice. Sort of like a reverse Goblin Rabble Master. Alright, so if they do nothing, I think I'm going to play a land and play a leap and play around sensor. Yeah. So this is actually pretty tight as well. So, evolutionary leap just means that if they ever try to kill a creature, we play green and sacrifice it and get a new creature. Obviously plays insanely well with tokens. Um, maybe I could have played the, the one drop also. Like, leaving up leap this turn is not super valuable. Yeah, I might have been wrong actually. I should, I should play one of these. I don't care if this gets censored, obviously. Like, there's no reason to leave a leap this turn because they're not going to do anything, so. Maybe I was wrong. Um, okay. So. We're going to smash. It is good that Amara is an army in a can. So, kind of can force a wrath by herself. We've got Gideon of Trials. They. they Tap any mana. Otherwise, we'll just play Inspector and Lana Rolves. Sure. We were surely not casting a Planeswalker into this open mana that they haven't used yet, so play Inspector. We get a clue. And then the question is do I want to play Lana Rolves or not? If they Wrath next turn and I play Lana Rolves, I only get two activations. We're just going to say go here. not much else they can be lining up but a Wrath, so... Right, they're gonna draw a card off Azorius Charm, and not Azorius Charm by Amara, which means they're probably light on lands, and Cycle Sensor. Mm. Much better hand than game one. Obviously we have a... Maybe we've drawn a sideboard card, but for the most part, all these cards are on our main deck. We just have the ability to, to do things that, uh without just dumping things on the table like a like a dumbo. So Fortify Village, awkward, but sure. Tag with everything. Marty, lucky thirteen. Marty He's the man. Reverse Goblin Rob Master. So so far we've committed essentially two creatures to the board. 
Or one, I guess, because this thing replaced itself also. So let's play Liner Elves and just say go. This is the new Abbey deck. It's right here. Unfortunately, Westvale Abbey, not very good against Teferi Azorius Charm deck, but Omen of a Sea, sure. Yeah, Mara's a, a, Mara's a house, you know. Obviously a little amusing anti-synergy here with the Vigilance effect of Johnny, but that's good, that's good with every other part of the deck, so. Yep, end step, Omen of a Sea. End step, Omen. Goes top, top, again. Inconceivable. All right, so here's the Wrath, which is awesome. So, Evolutionary Leap, we'll sack our token. Get a Shalai, Evolutionary Leap, sack our token. Get a Lana Rolf, Evolutionary Leap, sack our thing. So, that was like a three for three verdict. And now we get to untap and play Gideon and probably Migration. We revealed these cards. So whatever. Dustwatch Recruiter is also good, but that can be used later in the game. Play Gideon. Uh, I guess we'll plus. And we can play two Elves. We can play Sapperling Migration. Playing the Elves is kind of cool, because then if I have a, a Johnny, they have Vigilance. So let's play the Elves. We need more leaps in the sideboard. I mean, Gideon and Self of Spirit do similar things. Like, the second leap is really bad. Maybe a second leap could be good, but... Tapping three. Cast out. Okay. Gideon or leap? They don't know. They're in the tank. In the tank, big time! They're hitting the leap. They're hitting the leap. All right, so now we're obviously a little uh, less insulated against Wrath. We are, our Gideon's a little vulnerable to, a little vulnerable to Azorius Charm. Um, Playing Shalai would play around that, but plays into a Wrath a little bit. If I play a Johnny, we could always, uh... I mean, playing a Johnny's, it's good. Um, this is five, six, seven. It's only nine damage. We don't have lethal with a Johnny, but... Might still be a Johnny. I mean, like, shall I play around Azorius Charm? I think we're going to resolve a Johnny. Or try to resolve a Johnny, at least. The Vigilance is also kind of cool with my mana elves. I can play Inspector and then draw cards, so. The, the fear is they have, like, Azorius Charm, your Gideon, Untap Wrath. That's the fear. I guess we'll play this inspector first too. So it gives Gideon a plus one, plus one counter and a loyalty counter, which is pretty adorable. Oh wow, no, no, uh, no answer to Gideon here. That's pretty good for us. And our Vigilance allows us to crack our clue. And we still got two Planeswalkers in play, so... Yes, Gideon has different different uh, devotion to the gym. You know, he's their 4-4, he's a 5-5, he's a 6-6 six, six on some cards. Depends on how much he's working out lately, you know? This Gideon, it's been skipping leg day. But Gideon Jura, Gideon Jura is at the gym 24-7. It's a fairy time raveler. All right. Plus. 
So threatening to wrath on our turn. But Gideon's indestructible. So sure. I think they're going to be really sad. We also have a selfless spirit too. So we have literal everything here. Um... Nice supreme verdict. That wasn't good enough anyway. Yes, if Spirit resolves, we'll play Charm also. Or it doesn't matter. I mean, they can't stop the, the Lanner Elves and the, the Gideon. So, yes, if the Spirit resolves, we, we, we would have cast July, though. It's a good if it plays around Settle, sure. So, that game went a lot better. Um, we drew more than two lands, and we drew things other than Lanner Elves, basically. So that's pretty tight. It's a pretty pretty coast to coast game. We were ahead almost the entire way. And we didn't even draw a voice of resurgence. We did, we, did, we did draw the one evolutionary leap though, and that was nice. But this hand's not as good, but I think we gotta keep it. We have recruiter. Crypto with right is not nearly as exciting, but yeah, definitely won the game because of leap. Totally agree. Leap was a four for one. Recruiter number two. Okay. This next turn is probably equipped with right in into inspector. And we can play a recruiter with man up to recruit. Alright, second crypto with right, not nearly as good as the first. Heh. <laughs> I guess we can tap the line rolls. Yeah, let's do that, whatever. Could have tapped Lionel's for white, but if they counter it, it's pretty awkward, so. Do I think a non-spirits Bant company deck has a chance of being competitive in Pioneer? Not really. Uh, it's too reliant on, like, good cards, but I don't think the cards are good enough. I think some sort of synergy is probably necessary. This, uh, this Omen of the Sea goes bottom-bottom. And they play Monastery Mentor. We are screwed. Pretty sure we can't beat that one, honestly. We gotta like force a wrath. All right. Well, everything's going on. Everything's going in play. So, recruiter and migration. It's gonna be stupid when they go turn three mentor, turn four wrath, but beating monastery mentor is a huge pain. We have no removal on our deck at all. So Elspeth Sons Nemesis. That's kind of a weird card to have in against us. All right, I mean, we're kind of like built to play these grindy games to an extent, so start grinding, I suppose. We can activate, activate, that's two. All right, I'm gonna draw a card with my clue. Start there. Migration. Two, three, four, five, six. I guess we just kick this thing. We've got mana. We've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve mana. And let me be who we am. And let me kick out the jams. Kick out the jams. I don't kick them out. Alright. 
They've got tokens. Need more fireballs, yeah. One bane fire, please. Want to buy. So they shocked with Hollow Fountain and they're saying go. No, we're Warman Dolling against them just seems foolish. They just have so many ways to deal with it. Right, so we're gonna flip Dustwatch Recruiter, which is kinda cool. Actually, maybe not, because if I cast a new one and they counter it, it's pretty bad for us. I probably should have activated that at least once in response. That was a mistake. Oh, we'll cast two spells, doesn't matter, so. Alright, um play Dustwatch Recruiter for one mana. Could easily be a two mana spell and three mana for this, so. Alright, let's uh let's crank the old recruiter. Selfless spirit, love it. Nice little one mana selfless spirit. Cycle farmland in response. Sure. Ormondol is good when it kills them or when they can't deal with it. The problem is that, you know, multiple decks can deal with it. So now self spirits in play. That feels awesome. Dust Watch Recruiter. Shalai. Okay. I feel like we're assembling quite the board here. So now we have all of our stuff as hexproof, and we have selfless spirit in play. So getting wrath is pretty hard. We're just shoving everything in play. All right. I mean, you wanted to play a, a get on the board type of game against us. I am more than happy to play that game, opponent. What's up, Nanachi Power? This is our first game, or first match. We're in game three against Blue Eye Control. Zorius Charm, draw a card. Sure. Them overpowering us in Monastery Mentor is a possibility. What's up, Dick Coles? How's it going? Burning Wish for Overrun. Yeah, I mean, I mean we have Shalai in play, you know. So, flip back our, uh, our Recruiter. We do have the ability to pump our team with Shalai, so we can, like, say, go... On and then pump the team three times if you draw land. I agree. So far, this deck is looking a lot better than our previous version. There's more individual power stuff going on. And in matchups where Westville Abbey isn't good, we can actually win. Because that was the problem with the last deck where... We played against Blue White, and there were Zorius Charms and Teferis and whatever, and we just couldn't beat. We just couldn't beat them with Ormondal. We couldn't do anything. <laughs> All right, so they have this. They do have these, uh, you know, these monastery mentors and monks and stuff. So they need to be aware of that. It's a little scary. I think we are probably just going to hopefully draw land. And literally just play Lance they go next turn and just pump three times a Shalai, untap, and kill them. Shauna, that's the green white two drop legend. That card's just like not very good, unfortunately. If it had Shroud, like or it had heck it actual actual hexproof, it would be good, but it does not. Alright, land? Migration. Um Let me just cast that, I guess. We're not going to kick it, because it's uh, we lose out on mana if we kick it, right? Actually, wait, we have 6 and 5, yeah. So right now we have 6, 12, 12 uh, we have 18, or we have 17 mana. So if we kick it, we still can't pump twice. We're just going to cast it once, so yeah. So yeah, we're just going to play Migration and so yeah. Double, double pump July. 
No attacks. Elspeth is a very weird planeswalker in that it's almost like a, a double sorcery rather than a planeswalker. It's, it's in play forever, it just doesn't matter, you know? Just attack with self spirit. Um I guess that might have been safe. No, they kind of like blessed like the blessed alliance doesn't work either. I don't know. I, that that might have been safe, but it just feels like we're gonna win big and not like the little chip shots damage is not gonna matter. We could also pump the team and then fire off Dutch Watch Recruiter for time a few times if you feel like the uh, pump in the team is not gonna be good enough. They are doing a lot of stuff. They do have a lot of tokens in play. Uh, actually, I can I can recruit I can recruit once, and and then pump twice, which is kind of cool because we have uh, more. Yeah, we probably should have that with spirit. It's fair. All right, no attacks. So end step, we have a bunch of green. And that's six, and that's three. So let's uh, let's recruit first. Inspector or Mystic? Sure, Inspector. And then we're going to just... Uh... Shalai. And Shalai. Now we got some boomers. No spells were cast. Flip the recruiters. It's fine, I guess. Don't want to recruit response? I don't think so. So it makes it a 5-5 five, 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 and a 5-5. Five, five. They have four cards in hand. It's very hard to attack because you don't know how big their monks are going to be, and they have a lot of them. Um, and we just drew a land for double, uh, double pump. I'm pretty sure we just play a land so they go, pump three times, untap, and attack with everything. Voice of Resurgence is a four of an R deck. So, yes. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 2. So we can play Inspector. This deck reminds me of my, uh, of my good buddies, uh, Joseph Big Joe. And Big Joe was the rapper in my band way back when. Magic player, good dude, and he was his, his name is Yogi Brown. That's, that's his rapper name in our band. And Big Joe is a magic player, and he was a big saver upper. Whenever we used to cube draft, his deck was always just like Naya creatures, and he would never attack, and he would always draft a Naya charm, and he would never attack because he had a hundred things in play, and he would just end step Naya charm, tap your team, untap and attack once. He was a saver-upper. Didn't like the chip shot, you know? Didn't like to sneak in a point here and there. Didn't like to be attacking, look for good attacks. He was just sort of like, well, I can attack with everything and kill you. I'm going to do that. So we're... This game goes out to Big Joe. Yogi Brown, the saver-upper. Field of Ruin, sure. Yogi Brown... It's too hot. Don't look now. This is how we burn one down. Burn, 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 burn. burn. So they're gonna give me mana for free. Cool. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any at all. Play with matches dangerously close to paper dolls. Fight from my life with my back against the wall. Down in a corner, screaming down at all. That was our song, Firehouse. We weren't a very good band. Yogi had been rapping for a while, but he was mostly doing like spoken word, like stuff with no beats, and it's a lot of work to learn. Uh, you know, to get to learn um, 
how to like play with the band and so on and so forth. All right, so they sack their Elspeth. They pumped some stuff, and they're casting Dig Through Time, which is whatever. Fools rush in on the rise to the top, burn the foundation just to watch them all drop. Something, something. Played out to be a sheep, but I'm sly of a fox. Who puts out the fire at the fire? House. Who puts out the fire at the fire? House. Who puts out the fire at the fire? House. That was a good song. That was our one really good song. Zibby. Zibby likes the rapping. All right, so we're floating man here. We're going to... Uh, We've got 8, 9, or 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and two leftovers. We can crack this clue. You want to hear Firehouse? I can play Firehouse. That's not copyrighted. Sure. Who wants to hear my, my old band song? Who wants to hear Yogi Brown, the rapper, and me playing bass and singing backups? Raise your hand in chat if you want to hear this song, and I'll play it for you. All right, so end step. Pump everything. Recording quality is not the best, but. Alright, we're uh, attacking, I think. I think we're just uh, attacking. We're gonna lead back Shalai. I mean, they can't have settles. We have Shalai. They can't target our stuff because we have they have Shalai. I don't know what they could actually have, honestly. So the reason we don't talk about selfless spirit, but I'm sly. I've been a fox. I should attack, I guess. All right, here it comes. What is it? Azoria's charm. Make a token. Draw a card. Sure. So pump the squad. They pick lifelink. Ooh, that's that's a problem. Uh, did not consider that. We're still gonna kill basically everything anyway, so I think that's fine. That was my bad. Yogi Brown to say what? Don't look us up. The other songs are bad, but. I still think we're fine here. They're just gonna lose everything. And we still have Shalai and Spirit in play, so. Like, they can't block everything. They're still taking a ton. All right, so let's pump everything, I guess. And 
then let's ship a turn. So they take about as much as they gain. <laughs> they take exactly as much as they gain. That's awesome. It worked out where they took exactly zero damage. They gained enough. They gained a bunch and lost a bunch. But now we have a hundred thousand creatures in play and a self a spirit. So I guess if they have, I don't know what they could have. Honestly, they can't remove this and wrath. So they have second response and untap and kill them. So two seal aways and a wrath. We just sacrifice this. It's very time raveler, sure. So like if they even if they had seal away for Shalai, and then they try and bounce spirit, we just sack it, and they can't wrath, and they plus we just sack it on our turn. So if they seal away Shalai and just say go, we can just attack with not everything. Player unsettle, you know. Or just cast Shalai again, sure. Cast verdict. Uh sacrifice self a spirit. Any other bright ideas? That was a pretty sick game, honestly. I guess they're out with us just not sacrificing Selfless Spirit. That was sick. That was a wild, wild game. 1-0! 1-0 here on Your Deck Live, a show where I play Your Deck Live on stream. That was awesome. Disallow? That would have been gas. They already played Sinister Sabotage, though. Probably not playing Disallow, but that would have been really, really cool. This is our deck. If you're tuning in, welcome to the stream. This is a, a part two of a brew double dip. I had to brew a deck around, down, uh, around Westvale Abbey. Our first one didn't go so good. This is our second take on that for Glory MTG. We are 1-0. We beat the Supreme Verdict deck somehow. Folks, I got big news. Big news, all right? Call us Apparel and Design. I talk about them all the time. I always wear their shirts. They're comfortable. They're awesome. Great designs, awesome, awesome stuff. And tomorrow, not tomorrow, Monday, this coming Mog Monday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be unveiling my Coalesce shirt. It is Goblin themed. You're going to love it. You're going to love it, all right? It'll be available for sale on coalesceapparel.shop. Promo code GYM10, 10% off your order. It's going to be awesome. And the shirt's going to... Kind of statistics set a theme for the, the stream going forward. Really, really cool. That's right. Mog Monday. This coming Monday, 9 a.m. All right? And uh, it's finally here. People were asking for it for months. Well, the design is done. It's it's all signed, sealed, and delivered. It's already been printed up. We're ready to go. All right? So I'll see you all Mog Monday for my new t-shirt from Coalesce Apparel dot shop. What was I saying before about the mana bases in Pioneer pissing me off because the allied mana bases don't have pain lands and fast lands? What if this was Razor Verge Thicket, Razor Verge Thicket, Brushland? This hand would be great, but it's not. And we can cast nothing. <sighs> so we got a mulligan. Alright, well, this hand's at least fine, so. We'll keep this, and we are on the draw. Opponent also mulligans to six. I think we're going to ship a land. I'm going to keep. I'm just going to ship a land. We're on the draw. Don't want to ship any of these spells. We ship Inspector. We can go Elf into Warlord to Ijani, but we'll draw spells. Mausoleum Wanderer. Not many Insta Sorceries here, so... Ooh, Amara's pretty good. Uh, we'll see what we do this turn. Warlord. It's not bad. This is going to be a pretty pure race. Yeah. We just race in here. We draw land? We do draw land. So we can Warlord, or we can Amara and Inspector. Um, the fear is they have Queller next turn. 
so the lifelinkers from Amara do seem relevant. Uh, Johnny's probably only getting one shot in, but we go Amara Inspector. Then they attack. American probably attack. It's kind of hard to. Attack. I mean, I don't know honestly. The Supreme Phantom. Uh, we're gonna play the Warlord. Yeah, I'm playing Iron Root Warlord. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? If they have like a really good curve here, you could be. They go like Queller into company. All right, they are not playing Spell Queller. They're playing another Wanderer. Please don't play another Phantom. March is just too big. We don't. We don't. We don't, we don't want that. I think that card's not very good. We go wide enough as it is. March is a. It's too much. So they're leaving back Supreme Phantom. Interesting. Birds? Did I just hear birds chirping? Wow. Heh! We do have instant sorceries in our deck. Um, Alright. I mean, we can go Migration to Mera here. Attack for five. That's pretty good. I mean, Johnny next turn. Alright, sure. So they want to sack both Wanderers through... I guess they could play a Spirit and sack one Wanderer, but let's cast Migration. Honestly, if this is two mana, kill your Wanderer. I'm not really sad about it, so... And Iron Root Warlord gets in for five. A little five ball. Supreme Phantom not attacking is pretty weird. Honestly. And next turn we just a Johnny and pump the whole squad. Don't play land and company. Question by the logic of enemy lands having actual untapped options. Playing something like Lingering Souls help you by giving you access to the black and we, we can't play Lingering Souls. We're playing uh, we're playing Pioneer. No Lingering Souls in Pioneer. Selfless Spirit's pretty good. Oh man. Yeah, I think we're dead. Selfless Spirit will allow them to block and then race. Yeah, we're dead. Alright, I mean, unfortunately. This is basically just a goldfish kind of matchup, and they are on the die roll, and goldfish faster than us, so. Um, we have no way to gain life. They can just block with self a spirit. Just chomp. They just chomp. It doesn't matter what they do, honestly. So, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Turned out it wasn't amazing, but on the play, it was certainly fast enough. Um. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, alright, we're dead. Alright. Um, don't really have much going on for this matchup, honestly. Like, we don't really have any removal, and we can't block their flyers, obviously. So. Kind of just trying to goldfish and hoping that our hand is better than theirs. Uh, in that case, it was not. Um, I don't even think we're sideboarding. I mean, Hushbringer turns off like some of their stuff, I guess. It can also like block, maybe. It turns off Spell Queller. Uh, it turns off the 2 1 like Tapper, if they have it. it. Turns off, I mean, I guess it turns off the Hexproof thing, it doesn't really matter. Um, shall I 
stops the spirit from getting bigger, sure. I would say we definitely don't want Evolutionary Leap. And we could probably cut, like, maybe a Reclaimer. I mean, Westvale Abbey, I don't think they would stop Westvale Abbey, actually. I'm kind of Johnny. Yeah, Ormondal, do they have answers to Ormondal? Like, I don't think they have Reflector Mage. They have the Tapper thing, they can tap it, which is pretty annoying. Um, I think this is fine. Could bring in Selfless Spirit to block. And also might be better than, like, some random crapper creature. Uh... Yeah, Johnny, what's he supposed to bring himself a spirits to? Just trading with a flyer is a pretty big game. Uh, and let's cut, like, maybe one Reclaimer. Just kind of slow. Looking for Roman Dolls, not really super... Just takes too long, I think. Let's try this. I think I just sort of like a race. I think that our Goldfish is probably better than theirs. If we have a good Crypto with right hand, we can just dump our hand on turn three or four. Um, which should hopefully be good enough, but... Hushbringer Ormondal. That's true. That's true. Alright. Going first. It's not amazing, but Amara's great, and Reclaimer can find Ormondal, so we'll keep. Fools rush in on the rise to the top. Burn the foundation just to watch them all drop. Race against time, it's the hands of a clock. Made out to be a sheep, but I'm sly than a fox. Land of War Elves. Alright, they have a one drop again. A little annoying, but okay, we can work through it. Inspector, sure. Can't Inspector, though. Because I played the forest. I think playing Reclaimer is better anyway, so. Um, as long as we get this Amara going, I think we're okay. We are lined up for an Armandal like pretty quickly here. So Selfless Spirit. Now the question is, would they trade Selfless Spirit for Amara? I would trade. So we're attacking. Another Elvish Mystic. So you want a Inspector Mystic? and search for a Ormondal or whatever thingy. So two, one, one, all right. And that's enough creatures to do it. So yeah, I'll just go for it. Get our token. No blocks. Guess Hushbringer turns off the uh, the inspector. I thought we had nothing, but we do apparently. And we have enough mana to do it next turns, right? So we have sack this. We have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're Ormondal next turn, folks. Turn three, Ormondal. Turn four, I mean. It's funny, though, because Rush is, like, heinously ahead on board now, so might not even need Ormondal. All right, they are end-stepping. It's so probably a Spellcaller. Go get the Abbey. Oh, damn, they're reading Westfell Abbey, and they're like, oh, damn. All right, um... We're going to leave... We're just going for it. If they have something, they have something. We're going to sack everything but Reclaimer, maybe? One, two. Because we have a second Amara, so, like, you probably want to ditch the Amara. Three. And then we're only going to have three lands in play, so maybe keep an elf instead. I guess Reclaimer doesn't matter, right? Yeah, sure. Let's keep Lana Ralphs. Boom, Shakalaka! 
Women doll. Don't reflector mage me. Oh no. The Profane Prince. Lame. How many of these can they possibly have, you know? Come on. All right, back to the drawing board. Sack five creatures to deal nine and gain nine. All right, I mean, yeah, if we had Hushbringer, we were good, but we didn't. Amara, all right, let's draw a card. Okay. Play Amara. Would have liked to have reversed the order on Warlord and Mystic there. Casting War Warlord has turned been pretty good. So their clock is certainly not as good this game, but now we're uh, under the Spellcaller Collected Company crux. Sun Petal Grove. All right, so I think we kind of just got to hope they don't have it. I guess we're going to attack with Amara first and just see what they do. Resolving the Warlord's pretty pretty big, I think, so we'll just ship Amara, see what happens. I mean, there are seven, but our paths to getting through are not the best. All right, so they have company. Nice brick here, nice brick. Let's say Mausoleum Wanderer, land, 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 land. Brick City. So the pause on company means they either have a lot of choices or they're raging because they whiffed. And they're not raging because they whiffed. All right, so we get a token. If this trades with a, with a spirit, I guess it's fine. All right, sure. Now I get to resolve my warlord, which is great. Um, Cause that's a big boy. So we got a big boom boom. They're at seven and we're at 16. So warlord is almost lethal by itself. They still have four cards in hand, which is not good for us. Permeating Mass. Whenever Permeating Mass does combat damage to a creature, that creature becomes a copy of Permeating Mass. That seems really good. Like, that just turns off my ground attackers. Turns my Warlord into a 1-3. Alright, I guess. I just they have company too. That'd be so bad. Hushbringer. Ugh. Where you been? Where you been? Alright, so it's funny because Hushbringer means that Deputy won't give us our Westfield Heavy back. <laughs> it stops death triggers too. Um Yeah, we. I don't want to trade Warlord. I don't want to turn Warlord into a mass. I think Rathi's pretty good, honestly. I guess we're casting Hushbringer. Saying go. Yeah, I mean, they had the answer to Ormondal. We shoved all in. They called. Uh, they have spell caller now, too. All right. Yeah, I think we're dead, folks. Can the Warlord make copies of Hushbringer to trade? What? No, Warlord makes war ma makes the crappy soldier tokens.
Yeah, I think we're pretty dead here. We shoved. We got called. Happens. Don't really know what our outs are here. Uh, yeah, all right. I mean, what are you gonna do? You know, game one, they just raced us. Don't think we interact super well with them. We just don't have any removal. Like, there's a tribal synergy deck, and we just don't have any removal in our deck. So, they certainly do a better job of uh, getting things together than us. They didn't have Deputy, we're good. Probably only have, like, three of those. So, you know, we took our chance. Didn't work out. It's fine. One on one. If you're sitting in, welcome to the stream. Downtown Abbey, your deck live. A brew double dip. Checking off every box here for Glory MTG. And uh, we're one on one. We're one on one. Remember, folks, check out thehexholder.com for uh, the Hexholder. It's a new storage solution for your magic cards. Holds four double sleeve decks. Play mat, Zibby, dice, pad, pens, light, easy, convenient. Thehexholder.com. Check it out. Promo code Jim10. 10% your, off your order on thehexholder.com. Protection, convenience, and storage. All in one neat little package. Check it out. Well, the die roll. Let's go. Uh, yeah, sounds great. Keep. Keep, keep, keep. So we have turn two creatures, turn three planeswalker. Feels good. Feels good. Ooh, Amara's better than migration. Then I can't cast the inspector. All right, never mind. Let's cast migration. We want to ship this to Johnny on turn on turn three here. What's up, wizard? Morning, everyone. Sand Step Citadel. Is some sort of like Niv Mizzet action. Voice of Resurgence. That's pretty good too. Do we just ship Voice and Amara and then play a Johnny, or play a Johnny now? I mean, really have no idea what they could have next turn. Do we attack for six this turn? Allows we're attacking for three and playing two things, attacking for a bajillion the turn after. Oh, duh. We only have one white. Correct. Absolutely. That makes that one pretty easy. A Jenny. We're attacking for 12 next turn, so. A giant bus creatures ain't bad, you know? Fun fact hamsters are first domesticated in my home country of Israel. That's pretty cool. When? Must have been a long time ago because they are so dumb now, they must have been domesticated forever. Because Zibby was in the wild, he would die in six seconds. Zibby has zero survival instinct. Please don't have Deafening Clarion. Thank God. Like, Zibby's an idiot. He climbs to the highest point of things. He jumps off of things. He sleeps and eats all day. He has no survival instinct at all. Shalilai? Do they have wraths in the... Uh... They could have Bring Delight for a wrath, right? Yeah, we're just gonna play voice, I think. Yeah, Zibby's favorite game is Hawk. He goes to the highest point, and I go, Caw! and I grab him and fly him away. Plus a Johnny? Um, well, I don't want to minus this turn, right? We attack for 3, 6, 9, 12. Uh, yeah, we're gonna play voice... Sure. Let me just minus and smash. Attack for a dozen. Yes, the old the old eye of the high ground instinct. Assume we're getting wrathed. This puts them to five. We'll have a voice token and some creatures. 
Uh, I don't know. We don't, we don't know we're getting wrapped, you know? That's kind of awkward. I think Salt Lake Delirium will stay top tier for long. It's a pretty, pretty adaptable deck. So if we had plus, we would have attacked for four less. We'd have a, a pump on our Johnny. Um, I, don't know, I kind of like smashing. That worked out. They have Frank Delight for a Wrath. We still have a token. We still have stuff in play. We have Shalai. We were drawing a land, so. All right, so we have no idea what they're doing. Uh, they're probably some sort of mid-visit deck. What does that mean for us? It means you probably want... What do we want? Self of Spirits? Uh, I mean, Gideon of the Trials plays decently well. We're going to assume they have Master Removal. I'm also... They're going to have a million answers for Ormondal. I'm going to cut two Reclaimers. And then I'm going to cut a Crypto with Right. Damping Sphere? Yeah, I don't like that. It just makes Brink Light cost one more mana. That's only good against that. I'm not cool with that. Um... Hushbringer is interesting. It turns off, turns off Euro. Uh, it turns on Euro, right? Never mind. Hushbringer makes Euro do a, a six six for three. We can't do that. It turns off Nib Miss it. But that's not gonna work. Um, so like Gideon, like Selfless Spirit. Maybe shave like one elf. Yeah, this is fine. So a few uh, a few durable things here. This is fine. I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this. And I call and John were home when I was away, so they watch Zibby. Right, Zibby? Call! I'd play Zibby's favorite game with him, but he's sleeping. I don't wake him up. Yeah, but it's uh, it's only Thalia for exactly the card Bring to Light and does nothing versus anything else and doesn't attack for two. So I just don't think it's worth it. Um, this hand is pretty great. I'm gonna keep this. We got the old Leapski. We got the Warlord on turn two. Getting if we draw a white source, which we did. Ha da ha da ha da ho. Whoa. Forest, sure. They built Sylvan Carrington? They do. They do. That's a good one. Number one streamer to fold laundry to. Sweet. It's always my life's goal. And I guess Gideon just pluses. Next turn we can leap and voice or play. I'm going to play the Warlord probably. Just acts better. Van's back is taking Emberclave Goblins to Pioneer tonight. Can't wait. Awesome. Oh, they killed my elf. That's annoying. Man, if they have a nib visit next turn, we're screwed. What is this? Man. When this deck draws Sylvian character, it's really good. We're screwed. We got nothing. They're going to cast nib next turn. Okay, we're going to concede. All right, here's the warlord. Turn two, carry it to turn three, push Dreadbore. Gross. Teferi, bounce Warlord. Yikes. Westville Abbey, I'm not really uh, enthused about your prospects for this game. Yeah, I mean, we're just playing Warlord again. It's better than playing the voice. If I could go voice, voice, I might do that, but... Black, black. A chupaka. They really, that's the best card they can play in their deck. There aren't better cards than Chupacabra in their five card deck, or five color deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's still Warlord, I think.
You know, there's a lot of cards better than Chupacabra for, for a four mana kill spell. Like, gotta be something better than that. Well, they're not Brink Lightning of Niv, so this is okay. It's okay. Funny, Lord Draken, that my buddy Yogi, the rapper I was talking about earlier, he also wouldn't go ice skating with us because he had an irrational fear that he would fall down and someone would trip at the same time and a skate would cut his throat and he would die. Good old Yogi Brown. I miss Yogi. Alright, so, I mean, we're just playing stuff and attacking, I guess. We'll attack. I guess if, I mean, Nahiri can obviously ultimate and get Nibmizit, which is a huge problem, but. Teferi can just bounce something, which is a huge problem also. Let's attack Nahiri, though. If they get Nibmizit, we can't win. That's a rational fear, says Electro Brains. I used to go skating weekly, and that happened every time. All right, so Chupacabra's dead. Nahiri exiles my my warlord. Sure. Plus to fairy. Sure. Yeah. Uh. Okay, well. And I don't want my voice exiled. This sucks. <laughs> I think we just jam a million creatures. And don't attack. They have all spells. Do what what is going on here? I mean, they can, like, instant speed a, a Wrath, I guess, or something. I don't know what they're doing. I'm just going to play everything. We're heinously behind this game, so whatever. I should hope their hand is all, like, six mana Planeswalkers. They never draw land, I guess, or something. I don't know. We're not going to attack because they have a 0-3 oh, and we have two twos. Solar Blaze. So we got two seven sevens. Yeah, that was bad. All right, we can just go to the next game. That was a pretty good hand from them, not going to lie. Turn 2 carry to turn 3 kill spell, kill a planeswalker spell, turn 4 to fairy, turn 5 chubic opera, turn 6 solar blaze. It's pretty good. Pretty good. We're on the play. We're on the play, and we just got to hope they don't have a Sylvan carry to. Sylvan carry is by far their best card. Uh, we have no way to do anything about that, right? Nope, nope, nope. All right, so... It's possibly what Elspeth Sun's nemesis also. Might actually be better than Johnny. The Warlord's pretty bad, actually. I'm gonna leave it in one. Like, it's bad against the fairy. It's good against like Solar Blaze and Deafening Clarion, but All right, let's try this. Hushbringer turns Euro into a three mana six six. So I don't really like that. Don't really like that. On the play, we should be right. With a good hand, I think. All right, so... Well, we got our Westville Abbey. Westville Abbey, ready to go. Downtown Abbey. So, Mulligan. Oh my god. Why? Wizards of a Coast, why are there no pain lands and fast lands in allied colors? Why? Why do I have to mulligan this hand? It's not fair. It's ridiculous. It's preposterous. I mean... We can go like Tapland, Inspector Tapland. Ugh.
They could certainly get a lot better than this. Just play Gideon on turn two, you know? Like, Gideon's insane against them. They just happen to draw their one Dread Boar, so... I mean, Elspeth and Ajani is kind of redundant. But the leaps also... Oh, man. Oh, God. We go to six. I mean, we go to five, I mean. This hand's pretty freaking bad. I'm going to go to five. All right. This is certainly better. Uh, we're going to ship a Westvale Abbey. And a Fortify Village. We're going to let her rip here. Not holding back. Jim versus Meme deck? The 5 nib, nib deck is a real deck. I mean, it's not as good as it was, but... Temple of Mystery. All right, I mean, we'll just draw spells from here on out. No, Carrington. No, Carrington. God damn it, Carrington. God damn it. Oh, no. All right. All right, a little good news, bad news. All right, can't draw any more lands. Can't mulligan to five and draw five lands. We will never win, so we need to draw some spells here. Paradise Druid. All right. That's some block. That is some block. It's a fairy time raveler. Oh god. All right, we're dead. Pretty unfortunate. Pretty unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we will all get to five and draw six lands. I'm pretty sure we don't win any of those games, so. Well, they've got no red, so they can't cast Nib Mizzet or a full Bring Delight. But we have a Grizzly Bear, so... <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty unfortunate. Both those matchups felt kind of eh. The Spirits deck just kind of got ahead of us. And this deck's just like literally every removal spell I've ever printed. And we should mulligan to five also. So, what are you going to do? We're one and two, but last two felt a little poopy. Uh, if you're sitting in, welcome to the stream. My name's Jim Davis. We're playing... Double dip, Westvale Abbey. That's right. Westvale Abbey. It's a crypto with right deck. Kinda like green white tokens. And we are one and two. We gotta we gotta turn this around here a little bit. Certainly played some good games. Uh deck looks looks good when it works. But need a little help. Need a little help. If you haven't followed the stream with that follow button, of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you follow on there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we got a long stream today. We got uh, some popper to play later for another Year Deck Live double dip. <sighs> Battlefield Scrounger Fog. I'm going to be here literally all night. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Come back after this. And if you ever missed uh, any of my streams, most of it ends up on YouTube. So up and over to the YouTube where, again, you can find the first dip of this deck, which is right here. And uh, all, right, what all my other videos, friends? usually a video almost every day. Another episode. Check it out. Is Johnny even good? Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty good so far. Going first. Keep it in the hand. Let's go. Alright, so we got 
Turn to your voice, turn to your shalai, and hopefully draw some spells. Is March of the Multitudes or Venerated Loxodon not good enough? March of the Multitudes is just too much, I think. It hurts way over the top. It's just way too expensive. Uh, Venerated Loxodon is certainly good. Definitely an avenue we could go. I wanted to focus more on the Westvale Abbey thing for the theme of the deck, but it's very possible that just playing uh, that just playing Venerated Loxodon instead is better. So Castle Ardenvale means another blue-white control deck, which seems like a bad matchup, but we beat it in round one. So we'll see what we can do. We also drew another land, unfortunately. So I would like to stop doing that if possible. Please stop drawing lands. Okay. Well, we don't need an X spell because we have we have mana sinks like Shalai and stuff like that. So, All right, we're gonna play Shalai. Obviously, we have voice in play, so they counter. We get a token. All right, and. Just gonna keep on, uh, keep on keeping on here, I guess. Not a very powerful hand for us. Um, don't really have any of our engine pieces, crypto with right, things like that. But it's a decent beat down draw. Oh, they're casting spells. Oh, you love to see it. Shock, sure. And nothing else. Okay. Um, another voice of resurgence. That feels pretty good, actually. That defends against wrath reasonably well. Uh, ship it. Also defends against uh, like Azorius charm. Don't want to counter it. It's fine. Alright, cool. I mean, ship the cheddar here. They're at four. One, two, three into the foe. And now if they cast Wrath, they're, they're just dead. Like... If they Wrath, we have two voice tokens, and they're dead on board. So they are 110% dead. I have no idea what's happening right now. Couldn't tell you. Voice is good against blue-white. Voice is good against blue-white. They have Settle, we have Shalai in play. So... We got most things covered. All right. Um, yeah, we beat the Supreme Verdict deck again. Bring in our Planeswalkers. Uh, bring in Selfless Spirit. We're going to shave a Crypto with Right, an Elvish Mystic, a Lana or Elves, and I believe we cut the Warlords last time, too. Big Butt don't really matter against uh, Supreme Verdict and Teferi. Let's draw a leap again. Leap's really good. Sweet. You know? Let's take it. We'll take it. Right, Zibby? He's awake. Zibby. Wanna play the Hawk game? Hey, bud. Hey. How you doing? What's up? Tommy Rubs! Ah, Tommy Rubs! Oh no! Oh no! Here, bud. Come on. He's very fuzzy. Everything always sticks to him. Come say hi, Zibby. Come say hi, you sleepy little butt. He's so cranky. Oops. 
Look how cranky he is. So yes, he said so his game is he'll like, you know, go up to his shoulder, likes to hang out with the highest point possible, and you go Ka! and fly away with him. It's pretty sweet. Alright, Zippy, hang on me for a little bit, Zippy. Alright? You hang out with me. So we got a decent hand here. It's not great, it's fine. You can keep. This seems like a far cry from the first version. Yeah, I mean, the first version went 05, so we had to change things up a little bit, you know? All right. So, all right. Amara's pretty good against them. So singular, like as, I, as I said earlier, it's sort of like a Goblin Rabble Master uh, on, in reverse. Or when it attacks you the token, not otherwise, but self spirit's pretty good. Play Amara, playing around uh on sensor, attack for one. Definitely not as good of a hand as last game. Uh, no Planeswalkers, no Voice of Resurgences. Migration's not great against them. Um, if we had better cards to bring in, it might be a card that could, that could come out, but... Seal away my Lana Elves. That's pretty aggressive. Um, because Seal Away has a lot of value against things like Voice Resurgence, there's a Mare in play. No Teferi? I figured that was probably going to be a Teferi there. So... Alright. Um, I guess we're just stacking. Playing Selfless Spirit on a pretty naked board is not great. So the fact that we have all twos, can't double spell this turn, does kind of suck. But... We play anything else and they wrath pretty bad. We could almost they could have a counter spell here too. Oh man. Maybe we just migration. It's like the worst card. I should have probably shocked player on sensor. Yeah. Oh boy. Very dumb. Bad play, bad play. Luckily, a mirror is an army in a can, so we can just keep attacking the mirror. Migration is also one of our worst cards, so not really that big of a deal. Alright, coming in. They've got four cards in hand. So, let's play... I guess we'll just play Spirit. They counter it, it kind of sucks, but being a wrath here seems difficult, realistically. Azorius Charm draw card? Sure. That feels good. Alright, now we get to play, we'll play Migration. It's better on the beatdown plan, and Recruiter is better later. Alright, this is not bad. With Selfless Spirit in play, you know, we feel pretty reasonable. They want a double sense of a spirit. I'm cool with it, you know. Supreme verdict. Okay, that's why we put self spirit. So sure. And we're probably not playing anything else. So, planeswalker. Damn it. I'm gonna assume they have a second wrath. I think we can play Inspector, though. I think drawing a card is pretty sweet. I guess we could also go for another Spirit, too. So, yeah, we'll play Inspector. We'll draw a card. Drawing the other self of Spirit off of this clue would be pretty good. All right, and we're not going to play that. So, Wrath Me again. Sure. 
They only have two cards left. And Recruiter's pretty good at getting things back. So is Inspector. So is another Westvale Abbey. Tilt. And they are eight, so we do have threats in play, per se. White, white, blue, blue. Is the fairy? Six mana? Oh, no. All right. Uh, that's not good. Top three cards off Dustwatch Recruiter. You find a ladder off. Perfect. They've got two cards in hand. Well, now we're shoving everything, obviously, so... All right, we can recruit twice. I'm going to... I guess now they can attack Planeswalkers, too. All right, let's crack the clue. Inspector. That's awkward. Uh... I mean, they have 100,000 answers to Westvale Abbey, you know. All right, we'll say go. We'll recruit end step. Um, beating Dream Drawer is pretty tough. It's pretty tough. Yes, and I don't know if Abbey waste races Trawler. And Trawler draws extra cards to beat the Abbey. So all we need is an Azorius Charm or a Teferi or whatever. Brutal. Cycle farmland for an extra point. This is going to be a tough one to win. Amara, sure. Oh, you can just slam stuff into play. We're not scared of rats anymore, so they have, obviously have this in play, but we're going to flip the recruiter. All right, so we're going to recruit in response. Oh, brutal. Elspeth, come on. Flip that. It's not bad. Dream Drawler is pretty dumb. Pretty dumb. Need to get in for four here. And cast Amara and Inspector. Dig through time pretty good also. Sure. Alright. I mean, I don't think we're a favorite to win this game. We got stuff, but... Oh, God. Okay. Okay. We can kill that in the backswing, I guess. Right? It's getting worse. It's getting worse. What's up, Shez? Uh, we're at one and two with this deck. Um... One and two, unfortunately. Uh, we beat Blue White Control around one. We're up a game against Blue White here. Lost to Spirits. They kind of just raced us. We lost to the Nibbiz at deck. Five color deck. Uh, we all get a five in game three and drew all lands, unfortunately. Yeah, I think we're uh, at pretty big trouble here.
They declined to untap two lands. All right. And there's our recruiter. So we could flip Westvale Abbey, but uh, but uh, doesn't really uh, doesn't really do too much for us against two Teferis and Dream Trawler. All right, let's go to the next game here. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah, the play is pretty big too. So, CB's already napping. He had fun playing the Hawk game, and now he's doing his favorite thing to do, which is nap. Um, yeah, we're not back. I think we're all right. I think we're all right. Maybe Ladder Elves are better than Elvish Reclaimer. Because getting West Valley would be so irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I should have play. Yeah, I should have left in the Ladder Elves over the Reclaimers. It's okay, though. Uh, oh, boy. I mean, if it's the Temple Guard, we can keep this. But it's not. Yeah, we got him logging this. If it's Temple Guard, we can keep. You can voice on two and so on and so forth, but it's not going to work. Oh, my God. Oh. Pawn keeps seven. All right. Um, another mulligan of five here. Oh, come on. Westvale Abbey. Why must you torment us like this? Why? Going to four. Okay, I guess. Ship Shalai. Crypto with right. I guess Shalai. All right. Maybe we'll win this game. Maybe we'll win this game. What do y'all think? Rough hands, rough hands. Fortunately, Evolutionary Leap is only good when you have mana. It is very, very good. Probably our best card against them, but... Censor me. Tell me to shut up. I think we're going to our next match, folks. Pretty uh, pretty unfortunate draws here, these last few matches. Uh, been wrecked pretty hard by these mulligans in Game 3 scenarios. Yeah, I mean... We can do things, but... Nothing we're doing actually really matters. That's pretty aggressive. They put a card on top, too. Tilt. Verdict me. No? Alright. We doing stuff. We doing stuff. This game has gone about as well as it possibly could have so far. Please don't play Safari. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Ugh. One more turn, folks. Never, never packing it up. 
Yeah, it's a pretty frustrating mulligan to four, unfortunately. Um, let me get this last match here. I would say this deck is performing much better than the previous version. Um, much, much better. But, I mean, we just can't, you just can't win a game like this. All right. Shrug. Shrug. Let's have a nice clean fifth match here. Let's try and keep the mulligans to a minimum and see if uh, our deck can pull it off. Deck seems sweet. Deck seems sweet. Here's the deck if you're just tuning in. Your deck live, The Brew. We brewed around Westvale Abbey. It's a double dip part two. Uh, we're like a green white crypto with right token deck. And uh, we gotta, you know, have some uh, some cards in our starting hand to win the game. But got some sweet stuff going on here. Iron Root Warlord might not be good enough. Maybe we should play two more Dustwatch Recruiters. I just wanted something that was like not gonna die to a lightning bolt and was a mana sink. But maybe it's too clunky. It's gonna get like red decks and stuff. But and then Johnny's been fine. Shalai's been good. Uh, Amara's been great. Voice has been great. Crypto with right, good when we've drawn it. Uh, this sand is a little underwhelming. No real. We have all the all the mana sinks and no mana engines. Uh. I'm going to keep. I'm just tired of belonging to four, so... Classic opening. Just a classic. Swamp Bomac Courier. Happens all the time. It's pretty common. Voice is a good draw. Voice is a good draw. So probably Rakdos vehicles here. We got our 1-2 to block their Bowman Courier. Must be nice. Bone Crusher Giant. How about a little Voice of Resurgence? Inspector is good too. Inspector is uh, Bowman Courier's natural predator. Two swamps. So, double not playing Goblin Chain Whirler, which is good news for us. Another voice? Alright. Pretty sweet. Dreadhorde Horde Arcanist. Alright, now things have just gotten weird. I don't know what my opponent's doing over there. Probably playing Fatal Push and Thoughtseize, I guess. We're, uh, could double block with Voice and Inspector. And we get a token. Still have a Voice in play. Yeah, I actually like that. They have Fatal Push to, like, break this up. It's not the end of the world anyway, so. Ugh. That's bad. Okay. Oh. Oh, this mana base is making my balls hurt. Um. God. If we, if we could cast Shalivas turn, it would actually be awesome. What a tilt. I guess if it was a fast land, it wouldn't have come in untapped either, but... Give me Brushland or give me Death, you know? Maybe that block was stupid. Stomp targeting me. So they just want to crack their courier. Thoughtseize? Ugh. God, if only we had that Shalai in play, you know? 
brutal. So they're gonna push my elemental here. Let me just double block the one three, which is like fine. Claim to fame. Getting back Dreadhorde Arcanist. Oh man. We're really in the doldrums here. Alright. Play some stuff. Say go. Make some blocks. They can't thought seize me. Claim isn't doing anything right now. I only have one card in hand, so... I mean, they have, they have his courier, I guess. It's pretty terrible for us. So we're going to double block the courier, because one of my favorite plays playing courier is you kill a thing after it blocks. And then we're going to block like this here. We've got one card in hand. So they're about to draw a bunch of cards, but... What are we going to do? They sack Courier, and they hit a, uh, a Fatal Push. Could have put another Sapperling on the the Bone Crusher. We're just kind of throwing it away otherwise, so. Swift End? God. All right. Sure. What a weird deck. Only a weird deck. All right. Uh, I guess we're cracking a clue. Planet or elves. They have four new cards in end, as well as a Bone Crusher and a Murder Shore. So we are being outcarded by a million right now. Um, but the recruiters are going to flip if I don't play a spell. So I guess we're just going to, like, not play a spell, leave both recruiters back to block both of these, and then get in for a decent amount. So let's recruit, I guess. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good Warlord matchup. Yeah, they could definitely attack in Thoughtseize, which is fine, I think. We have good blocks. We also just, like, have a lot of power in play, so... Uh, Liliana of the Last Hope. Okay. It's, it's interesting. And Fatal Push. Oh, my God. This is pretty embarrassing. They have another push. That would be so sick. Alright, you're up. They can kill my, my elf, I guess, but whatever. If we draw Ormondal next turn, I guess we can't we can't do it yet.
So they're just like Rakdos removal, basically. Alright, well that wasn't fun at all. That's probably the least amount of fun I've had playing Magic in a while. Um, Alright. Seems like it's going to be fine, but we can't deal with Dreadhorde Ar Arcanist, I guess. I can't imagine they have that many one mana spells in their deck, but they drew lots of Fatal Pushes. So we did. Um, let's bring in some stuff, I guess. We can't kill the 1 3, which sucks. Um, should probably shave a Crypto with right, because we're just killing all of our creatures anyway. We, like, probably want Gideon of the Trials. We want to cut. Maybe Sapperling Migration. You want Selfless Spirit? I don't think so. Love Struck Beast? It's certainly of a decent size. I don't know. Honestly. Reclaimer seems terrible. Um... I guess Love Struck Beast seems fine. I don't think about Selfless Spirit, though. Well, let's cut, like, two Migrations, I guess. We can cut, like, two Rites, honestly. The problem is, like, they just kill everything, so our, our Crypto with Rites just isn't very good. And I guess we'll cut a Migration. And we'll try this. Recipes is way too narrow, yeah. Probably have Croxa. That could be a thing also. Um, maybe. Maybe. Obviously, we draw a green land. I mean, a white land. This hand is great. We got love. I mean, any land isn't even that bad. Turn one beast, turn two map migration, turn three beast. I'm going to keep. Any third land will do. Any white land makes this hand actively great. Honestly, the, I think the Bowman Courier won them at last game. The fact they were able to just uh, draw an extra four cards. I mean, just like couldn't get ahead of it, really. What's up, uh, 23? How's it going, my friend? If you folks are tuning in, welcome to the stream. Your Deck Live. Show up by Your Deck Live on stream. A little Westvale Abbey action. It's now Swamp. Arcanist again. We did it. We did it. Um. Yeah, shit the beast, right? Like, there just aren't that many good one-mana spells in Pioneer. Well, that's that's a good one, I guess. Ever done a Your Deck Live for Mog Monday? Uh, no, nah, not really. Um, I like him to ban Dig Through Time and Underworld Breach in Pioneer. In Modern, just ban everything. I don't know, Once Upon a Time and 
a whole bunch of stuff. I don't, I don't really know, but... Discard the Ajani? Okay. I mean, they can't push through my Love Struck Beast, right? No? Okay. And Bowmat Courier, sure. So, land for Shalai. No. Not bad, though. Not bad. So now I can smack for five and play the Warlord. It's an aggressive jump block. Okay. So they're attacking and casting Thoughtseize. Which is fine. We're going to be able to kill this Arcanist by blocking with literally everything. They're going to go to 15. This isn't necessary. What could they have that uh, keeps this thing alive? Probably nothing, I guess. Yes, yeah, it's fine. Dreadbore, my warlord. I mean, we're still attacking for a whole bunch here, and they seem pretty dead this game, which is nice. That's a kill creature with a mono green deck, or a green white deck. You block. Ah, yes. The old Bomat Courier. Fatal push my recruiter, sure. So they go to four. We play a bunch of stuff. They're just dead. Life is good. I want this game three, folks. I am going to be very unhappy if this deck goes one and four. Not that this deck is the best deck ever made, but it deserves a lot better than one and four for sure. Bantu's Last Reckoning? That would be gas. I'd have a lot of respect for that. All right. Um... Reclaimer, a little more appealing with uh, against Bowman Courier in the play, but I think we're fine. We block Bowman Courier pretty well. Our deck is literally all crappy blockers, so. Thanks for following Iron. If you haven't followed, just hit that follow button, of course. Watching on YouTube, make sure you follow on there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Your deck live. This hand's tight. I'll keep this. Imagine Elspeth seems pretty good against them. Turn one, thought sees. It's not Bow My Courier, so it works for me. And they take my escape card. Cool. You can have that one for later. I mean, they have like some sort of mass removal that would blow, but they are playing Bomac Courier, so. God damn it. They have to start every game. They have a push. We're just screwed. We just can't ever win. Um, what's better, Recruiter or Amara? 
probably recruiter. We just can't block the Dread Horde. Which sucks. Very weird deck. Oh, man. When Arcanist works, it is very, very good. Um, Alright, I mean... Just playing more stuff, I guess. I guess eventually we'll be able to play uh, Elspeth, right? <laughs> Enough things die. The escape is four cards. Arcanist is good in Legacy where you have 25 one-mana spells in your deck, but I just can't imagine they have that many good one-mana spells that aren't Thought Seize or Fatal Push, so... Alright, well they have stomped my Amera. Please cast Thought Seize. Oh, thank God. All right. So they have three cards and a bone crusher to my nothing. We draw. Voice is fine. Voice could be worse. Voice could be worse. Liliana of the Last Hope. If we draw a land, we can escape this, right? Yes. We drew a voice. Okay. It's also kind of fine. Um, yeah, ship it, I guess. So, lands or spells are reasonable. The Warlord. It's a nice big booty. Suppose we are going to need to punch that Liliana eventually. If we can. <sighs> Doesn't look like we can. Alright. Um, yeah, I mean, they can just block with Bone Crusher and Dread Horde. We don't really have any good attacks on Miss Liliana. It's probably going ultimate. If we attack with all three, they just get to eat two creatures, which is terrible. And making a token, we're going to do that. This doesn't really help, though. It's not sure how we're going to... Uh, how we're going to pressure Miss Liliana. The attacks are just so bad. Getting voice tokens is not the end of the world, but... I'm just pretty sure we're not going to be able to stop it for an ultimates. I guess we're just stacking, honestly. Block here, here. Yeah, I mean, I guess. All right. This feels really, really bad. So 
they're going to kill a voice. That's interesting. All right. It's kind of weird, honestly. When I kill the Iron Root guy, and then they, then they can plus on my token that I make. Okay. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> Alright, I mean, unfortunately, we seem to have paired against a deck that was literally all removal, and we just can't win. Uh, and their deck... I don't know if their deck beats anything else, but it certainly beats the crap out of us. Um, which is... Pretty damn frustrating. <sighs> All right, so we've gone one and four. Um, we've gone one and four. And I don't think this deck deserved a one four. They deserve better than that. We mulligan to four a couple times. Played against all removal spell, Wrath of God deck. Um, kind of frustrating, but I think unfortunately the conclusion for uh, for Glory is that Westvale Abbey just isn't really a good plan A. Um, deck was kind of cool. We did some cool stuff. But it probably would have been would be better if we just cut the two abbeys and cut the two reclaimers and played like some Gideon, Ally Zenda cards, some other good cards and tried to win like that. Um Crypto's Right was cool. Amara and Voice are pretty cool. Oh, there it is. Glory says, I got my money's worth. You were right. The three magic words. <laughs> like Westville Abbey is a good card. It just, it just looks a lot more powerful than it. It just looks a lot more powerful than it is, because indestructible doesn't mean that much. Um, there are just so many things that get around it, whether it's Azorius Charms, a Fairy Bounce, any Exile effect, Reflector Mage, Deputy Detention, uh, so many, so many, so many, so many things, um, that you know, it's it's good against some decks. Uh, no deck we played against was was cold to it, except for that last one, I guess. But we couldn't we couldn't get enough creatures in play, so it's all right. But we're not playing Castle Ardenvale because our mana base is atrocious. Uh, Fortified Village sucks. Every Ardenvale is not a basic land for a village or some Petal Grove. So, but yeah. So obviously a playable card, but more of a niche Plan C kind of thing. Plan B, Plan C. Um, but yeah, deck was definitely fun. Like I do wish we had we had drawn a little bit a little bit better and not mulligan to four and five a few times, but deck was sweet. Um Blue White Monument deck. That's pretty cool. So Glory, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate it. Uh hopefully you enjoyed your your deck live here. Thanks for the double dip, thanks for the brews. Appreciate that. And um any questions, feel free to ask them in chat. Otherwise we're watching on YouTube. We got more to play on stream, but YouTube folks, it's it for this video. So please take a second, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you fine folks in the next video, all right? Love you, YouTube.